Okay, so the next thing that we're going to cover is the shares that you need to use for future round share price calculation. And then the actual liquidation preference given to convertible debt. Um, it's not exactly the same. Generally, convertible debt gets a effective higher liquidation preference. And I'll show you that right here. So you can see I've already formatted uh, the, the cells that I want to work on here. And I'll go from there. You can match my formatting in just a few minutes. So the total shares post financing for Calc. And what that means is over here, whenever we did the series, uh, series seed share price calculations, we based the total shares post financing on, a, on, on the initial number of founder shares, right? Um, the, you can see the formula here is what I was trying to show you. We started off with a million and we divided, divided it by the post money founder percentage and to get the total shares post financing. And that's how we then continued our calculations. So how do you do that whenever you have convertible debt outstanding, all these other, other things to finagle with clearly in the next round, you're going to have a different amount of shares before the investment and then after the investment rather than just the in the founder shares of a million so we need to calculate what that's going to be and that's what we're going to do so we go down here let me zoom in a little bit and we do the total shares post financing and see what we're doing here is we're going up to the same column so this is the pre-money method still and we'll do one for each method. The pre-money method will do total shares post-financing minus the option pool shares plus, and we gotta add a few things back in here. So we wanna add in, well, that was a little snafu again. It's okay, they happen, so we do this plus this minus the option, option pool shares. Then we add in the shares issued here. And then we subtract the investor shares here. Of course, that's not correct because we have to add this column up real quick here. So we'll sum this column, except for the share price at the top. And now you can see what we got here. 1,226,330 are the number of shares we'll use for calculating the share price of the next round. It's a little confusing, but I think you'll understand. So I'm gonna go in here and lock in this formula just so I can copy and paste this over. And what you'll see is that the number is the same. No matter how you do it, the number turns out to be the same. And that's what we want because that means that everything will calculate correctly in the next round and the only difference is, is how much is going to the option pool versus how much is going to the the investors etc etc so that's that's the, the main difference here so now let's go down here into the convertible note liquidation preference so what we need to do first is go and see what the share price was actually paid. So the way we do that is we can just go up here and say, how many shares did we get and how much did we pay for them? So we paid 233,280. We divide that by the number of shares we got here. And this is actually a little subjective because you could use the 200,000, which is the actual dollar value that was paid but what was converted was the dollar value plus interest. And if you wanna account for a little bit of extra risk, which generally you do for the investors, then they earned that interest and then they gave it to the company. So that's why I use that 233,000 versus the 200,000 actual dollars paid. So you could use the 200,000 if you wanted to get, I mean, cash on cash, 100%, you know, all the way back to the beginning, but I don't think that accounts for risk properly. So. Now we go in and we let's reference the cell that says the liquidation preference on the series seed. Um, we haven't done that yet. Um, so 
I'm gonna come over here and click right there because I know that's where I'm gonna put it in just a second. And in fact, I'll go ahead and do that right now. So let's just type in liquidation preference. And this is where we begin to create cells that we reference in our waterfall analysis. So our liquidation preference is a one here and we can make that whatever we want. Then we'll do go ahead and do these other couple of cells too. So participating and participation cap. So most of these things you don't really have to worry about at this moment, but let's just go ahead and put them in there for formatting's sake. Make them yellow. Put my box around them. We'll go here. So now let's go back down here to the convertible debt liquidation preference. The series seed share price paid. Well, we know what that is, right? We can go up here and we know that we need to reference the actual price paid way up here, 571. And the series seed share price times the liquidation preference multiple gives us you know, the actual uh, liquidation preference that is given to, to each share that was bought in the series seed. So it's just this times this. So the effective liquidation preference multiple of the convertible debt is the series seed share price paid, this 571, divided by the price paid by the convertible note holders. So in all reality, the convertible note holders got, let's back that up a little bit, too many decimals, a 1.14 liquidation preference in addition to the discount to the round and everything else. So that's that's pretty solid for the convertible debt holder. It goes up in accordance with if you change this, of course. So that is uh, how you calculate the effective convertible debt or convertible note liquidation preference.